tree here, what appears to be a Boomslang, and from here it looks like it's a male. As uh, you can see here, it's amongst the houses. So we're going to try to extract it from the tree, and uh, I'll tell you a little bit about this one. It's a very unusual and quite a special snake. I think the only way I'm going to get this, put my gloves on, and maybe try to bend this tree downwards. coming down to us. For those of you who've never seen one like this, this is commonly known as a Kivu Boomslang. And the word Boomslang is uh, the Afrikaans, the South African Afrikaans word for tree snake. Genus and species, this is Dysphyllidus typus kivuensis. Now these ones are actually quite unique to this region. They've got a smaller distribution area than your standard Boomslang, so to speak which is Dysphyllidus typus viridus. And this one is found quite extensively in this region of Zambia, but you won't find it further south, such as places, places like uh, Lusaka and in the southern province. In the southern province, these ones, this is a male, and it's one of the few snakes in the world that is called dimorphic, which means you can tell the males from the females by the color alone, just like in the bird kingdom. This one is typically a male. Your females, just like everywhere else, will generally be brown or black or any shade in between those. And the females of this type of species tend to grow larger and they are more aggressive. Now for those of you who have ever seen a snake like this, when they agitate it, they, they inflate uh, quite a large portion of their neck and body from behind the head downwards and this one as you can see it's not showing that it's agitated it's a slow striker but this snake is also like the vine snake arguably one of the most toxic snakes in Africa and uh, a bite from a serious bite from one of these needs some very quick <coughs> serious medical attention but they tend to be very docile. As you can see, this one is fairly docile. It's warming up in the sun now, and it's getting energy, and it, it just wants to leave. Beautiful snake. Uh, and what you're actually seeing here in terms of patterning is that basically each scale, if you can get a close-up of the head, basically each scale on its body is a black scale, and it has a yellow dot. Like I said, very unique to this species of snake. And uh, this is among, among residential areas. It's starting to get a bit agitated now. So we'll have to go and release it somewhere. But it's, uh, to me, this is an awesome snake. This one is virtually fully grown. Now, in all other places, the, the Boomslung, and you may be able to notice, those of you that, that have experienced these, uh, this one's head is not quite as domed as the ones you may have seen in other places. The green ones, uh, males in other places, are either brilliant green, just like the leaves on the trees, or they could be green and yellow, or they can be green and black. And this one, like I said, is fairly unique to this particular corner of Zambia. Awesome snake indeed. Uh, very, very agile in the trees, 
tend to be a bit clumsy on the ground, but this one's quite well warmed up, so I, I'll attempt to show you that they can be fairly fast. There we go. Come back. I know you want to go. I know you want to go. Don't worry about it. I'll let you go soon. So yeah, it's not a snake to be messed with by the average person. What we do tend to find in places like South Africa on the farms and things like that, the farmers see these in the trees and the first thing they do is get the shotgun out and blast them to smithereens. And it's actually not necessary. They don't like being around human beings. Uh, they don't normally invade homes or anything like that. They are normally found where there are lots and lots of trees. As you can see here, this village is surrounded by forest. And that's where they are most happy. And you'll find them anywhere between, from, from ground level, right up to five, six, seven, eight meters in the trees. And they'll eat chameleons, tree-living lizards, tree-living rodents, and sometimes tree-living frogs. Four, with uh, highly venomous snakes. How is it that some of them are constantly trying to bite and showing lots and lots of aggression, and others like this and the gaboon viper don't seem to show much aggression. So here's the statement, with snakes, just because a snake bites or tries to bite, it doesn't mean it's dangerous or highly venomous. And just because a snake does not try to bite, it does not mean that it's not venomous. That that you just witnessed there is what very few snakes in the world can do. Because this is a tree living snake, it has a very prehensile tail. As you can see, this snake this snake will hold on to my hand and it's able to climb up. It's getting a bit tired now. It's able to climb up its body uh, as if my arm was a branch. But I think we've agitated this one enough now and it's probably a bit tired and it just wants to go. So I'll put it in the box and we will go and release it.